I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. The creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause behind him. And he is independent because there is no other cause behind him. Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire, land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universe. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of appear nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute Dharma truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Votra. Dharma Projita Kaitra Votra. Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam. Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Moon. Shivadam Tapo Trayon Moon. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kim Vapare. Sadhya Hridi Avurudya Tetra. Sadhya Hridi Avurudya Tetra. Kriti Bhi Susu Subhis Takshana. Kriti Bhi Susu Subhi Takshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad the Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavad the Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam. Nigama kalpaturur galitam phalam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahur aska bhavibhavaka. O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. O oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectar and juice was already relished. Although its nectar and juice is always relishable for all, including liberated souls, including liberated souls. Sanvatam swakata Krishna. Sanvatam swakata Krishna. Punya shravana kirtana. Punya shravana kirtana. Vidyantak stohi bhadrani. Vidyantak stohi bhadrani. Vidu nati suhit satam. Vidu nati suri satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic world. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is it self righteous activity? It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. 
I shall the best wishing And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhakti bhavati nashtaki. Bhakti bhavati nashtaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kama loba dayas chaye. Kama loba dayas chaye. Cheta etara navidam. Cheta etara navidam. Stitvam sattve prasidati. Stitvam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manasu. Evam prasanna manasu. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha sijayate. Mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when all these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in the position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Become enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chityante sarvasam sayat. Chityante chasyakarmani. Chityante Trista evat manishwari. Trista evat manishwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the heart, not a material affection. Thus bhakti yoga serves the heart, not a material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness, Therefore, it's only by hearing from the Lord Krishna, from the Lord Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Kanta 1, Chapter 18. Maharaj Parikshit, cursed by a Brahmana boy. Sutta Uvacha. Sutta Uvacha. Yo vai droni astra viplusto. Yo vai droni astra viplusto. Namatu udare mrita. Namatu udare mrita. Anugrahad bhagavata. Anugrahad bhagavata. Krishna syad bhuta karmana. Krishna syad bhuta karmana. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Sri Sutta Goswami said, due to the mercy of the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, who acts wonderfully, Maharaj Parikshit, though struck by the weapon of the son of Drona in his mother's womb, could not be burned. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The sages of Naimisharanya became struck with wonder after hearing about the wonderful administration of Maharaj Parikshit, especially in reference to his punishing the personality of Kali and making him completely unable to do any harm within the kingdom. Siddha Goswami was equally anxious to describe Maharaj Parikshit's wonderful birth and death. This verse is stated by Sutta Goswami to increase the interest of the sages of Naimi Sharanya. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, we'll go on to the second one. Brahma Kapotitad Yastu. Brahma Kapotitad Yastu. Dakshakat Prana Viplavat. Dakshat Prana Viplavat. Na samum o horu bhayad. Na samu horu bhayad. Bhagavat arpitasyaya. Bhagavat arpitasyaya. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Furthermore, 
Maharaj Pariksit was always consciously surrendered to the personality of Godhead. And therefore he was neither afraid nor overwhelmed by fear due to a snake bird which was to bite him because of the fury of a Brahmana boy. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. A self-surrendered devotee of the Lord is called Narayana Parayana. Such a person is never afraid of any place or any person, not even of death. For him, nothing is as important as the Supreme Lord. And thus he gives equal importance to heaven and hell. He knows well that both heaven and hell are creations of the Lord, and similarly, life and death are different conditions of existence created by the Lord. But in all conditions and in all circumstances, remembrance of Narayana is essential. The Narayana Parayana practices this constantly. Maharaj Prikshit was such a pure devotee, he was wrongfully cursed by an inexperienced son of a Brahmana, who, under the influence of Kali, and Maharaj Prikshit took this to be sent by Narayana, he knew that Narayana, Lord Krishna, had saved him when he was burned in the womb of his mother. And if he were to be killed by a snake bite, it would also take place by the will of the Lord. The devotee never goes against the will of the Lord. Anything sent by God is a blessing for the devotee. Therefore, Maharaj Pariksit was neither afraid nor bewildered by such things. That is the sign of a pure devotee of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada Ki <clears throat> Okay, so this is really important uh, verse and purport. Well, both are important. And there's a point here that I want to talk about. He who knows well that both heaven and hell are creations of the Lord, and similarly, life and death are different conditions of existence created by the Lord. I'm sorry. He knows well that both heaven and hell are creations of the Lord, and similarly, life and death are different conditions of existence created by the Lord. Okay, but in all circumstances, in all conditions, and in all circumstances, remembrance of Narayana is essential. So that's why we say, and someone says, oh, can you please give me a blessing? I always say, Krishna Matir Astu. May you always remember Krishna. Because you can also remember Krishna in hell. In fact, you probably remember him more in hell than in heaven. It's the material heaven. So we see this remembrance of Krishna is the most important thing in our life. And the worst thing we do is forget Krishna, forgetfulness of Krishna. Now most people, most people are in a state of forgetfulness of Krishna. Most people on this earth, they go through long periods where they don't remember Krishna. Then when they go to a, a funeral, they hear the priest or the minister or the devotee say a few words about God. You know, they listen, but I don't know if it makes a big difference in their life. Uh, if someone is very sick in the audience or while the priest or the devotee is speaking, sometimes it makes a difference. But usually they just hear it and in one ear, out the other ear. As soon as they go out, they're back to mundane life, not thinking about God, not thinking about this could happen to me, I could be next in line for the funeral house, and so forth. So this forgetfulness of Krishna is the cause of all our troubles in life. And unless we take this interest in hearing about Krishna, 
uh, our memory of Krishna is never really awakened. This is explained in two verses, which are really nice. One is 11th chapter, 32nd verse. 32nd verse, no. Uh, okay, 13th chapter, 26th verse. Let's take a look at that. 13th chapter. Yeah, 13th chapter, 26th verse says, Oh, 11.36, I didn't look at that properly. Okay, so it says that, and there are those who, although not conversant in spiritual knowledge, begin to worship the Supreme Person upon hearing about him from others. Because of their tendency to hear from authorities, they also transcend the path of birth and death. Now, that's exactly what we're doing. We're trying to develop this tendency to hear about the Lord on a regular basis. And Prabhupada writes in the purport, this verse is particularly applicable to modern society because in modern society there's practically no education in spiritual matters. There it is. No education in spiritual matters. Some of the people may appear to be atheistic or agnostic or philosophical, but actually there's no knowledge of philosophy. As for the common man, if he is a good soul, then there is a chance for advancement by hearing. This hearing process is very important. Lord Chaitanya, who preached Krishna consciousness in the modern world, gave great set stress to hearing because if the common man simply hears from authoritative sources, he can progress, especially according to Lord Chaitanya. If he hears the transcendental vibration, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It is stated, therefore, that all men should take advantage of hearing from realized souls and gradually become able to understand everything the worship of the Supreme Lord will then undoubtedly take place. Lord Chaitanya has said that in this age, no one needs to change his position, but one should give up the endeavor to understand the absolute truth by speculative reasoning. What did a teacher in school? Speculative reasoning. <laughs> this, is a, this is the disease. It's even in ISKCON. There are speculators also. <laughs> Unbelievable, but true. Now, why do I say that? Well, those who do speculate in this kind, they deviate. Just like the whole Ritvik, or I call it the nitpick movement, is one of gigantic speculation. Right. And therefore, we stick to the verse, Mahajana Yena Gita Sapanta, that you can't understand Krishna simply by study. You can't understand Krishna simply by going to this lecture or that lecture. You can't understand Krishna by any other means because it's a secret hidden in the heart of a pure devotee. Then how can you understand? Mahajana Yenigata Sapanta. Simply follow the path chalked out or outlined by the pure devotee. So that's what we're doing. Prabhupada chalked out a path for us. Waking up early every day bathing, coming to Mangala RT, and he didn't say, when the class starts, you walk out of the room. That's one thing he didn't say. He also said, <laughs> you should hear the class. Not only you take part in Mangala RT, you should also hear the class, at least once a day, but actually it's, it's preferable twice a day. So, this hearing is the most important thing. It's, it says, there are nine types of devotional service. Number one is, Shavanam, hearing. And number two is, well, kirtan, repeating what you hear, right? So kirtan is one person chants and everyone else repeats it. Bhagavatam is one person 
uh, recites and everyone repeats it, just like every morning saying uh, that uh, from our respectful base, not to the supreme absolute truth, personality of God, it's Sri Krishna, so, and everybody repeats it. So there's hearing and chanting, or hearing and repeating is the way you learn spiritual knowledge. It's also reading because we have bad memories in this age. Before, there was no reading. You didn't have to read before. You would hear it once because everyone was following strictly rules and regulations in Satya Yuga. You could remember the rest of your life. You only had to hear it once. But Kali Yuga is so disjuncted and, and deteriorated in, uh, uh, by weapons of mass distraction that people need, have to hear over and over again until they finally can assimilate something and remember it the rest of their life. So this repetition is very important in, in Kali Yuga. Sometimes people say, ah, the, I mean, all Prabhupada's purports are the same. Chant Hare Krishna, you know. Follow the rules and regulations and eat prasadam. You know, why, why doesn't he write something different? No. Because he is writing something different in every purport, believe me. But we're so dull, we miss it. And I'm, I'll give you examples of it. I'll give you examples. For example, Prabhupada says, um, just one second. Okay. So, uh, so th there's a letter to a young, la young, young lady at the time. Her name was Arundhati. She was the husband, the wife of uh, of uh, the uh, pundit. I'll think of his name in a minute. Anyway, he was the translator, of, uh, and he helped Prabhupada uh, translate and, and, and Sanskrit and all those things. Anyway, uh, Pradumna was his name. Yeah. So he says, regarding your question, what does Rama mean in Hari Rama? Is this Balarama or Lord Ramachandra? You can take it both ways, Prabhupada says, because there's no difference between Ramachandra and Balarama. Generally, it means Krishna. So the name Rama so now has three meanings. It refers to Krishna, it refers to Balarama, and it refers to the Lord Ramachandra. Generally, it means Krishna, because Rama means enjoyer. So either Ramachandra, Balarama, or Krishna are all Vishnu tattvas and are all always enjoying. The Shakti tattva, or Jiv, Jiva tattva, is always enjoyed. Our position is always predominated. That means we sh we're always subordinate. If we remain in that position and properly use our small independence, then, remain, then we remain happily eternally. What's our small independence? We can either choose to follow Krishna's instructions or we can refuse to follow. That's it. You can't make the sun come up. You can't make it go down. You can't hold your... Uh, your uh, uh, unclean substances in the body you will eventually have to evacuate them. There's so many things you can't do. But this one thing you can do. You can either accept Krishna or reject him. So that's the, that's the limit of our free will. So our position is always predominated. If we remain in that position and properly use our small independence, then we remain happily, eternally. But artificially, if we want to be independent, and imitate the supreme enjoyer, then it is delusion. Material life means trying to imitate the enjoyer, meaning Krishna. And spiritual life means to remain in one's eternal position as enjoyed. This Hare Krishna mantra is addressed to the energy of the Lord and the Lord himself to keep, so the energy of the Lord is referring to Srimati Radharani. So he's going to explain what the meaning of the Hare Krishna mantra is. This Hare Krishna mantra is addressed to the energy of the Lord and the Lord himself 
to keep the chanter in his eternal position of being enjoyed. The prayer is, my Lord, O oh, the spiritual energy of the Lord, kindly keep me engaged in your service. Regarding your other question, Krishna in his four-handed Vishnu form is within our hearts, but he is not different from the two-handed Krishna. So here we have a simple letter that's, that's repeating Prabhupada's instructions that is uh, yes, in his books. But when you read this, it sort of strikes you. Uh, I mean, the same thing is there in his books, but when you read a book, there's so much print, you just sort of get, you know, bewildered at a certain point, you know, and, and you read a whole book and then someone asks you, so what was in the book? You say, oh, it was great. I know it was great, but can you remember something? Well, they were talking, uh, I read the Krishna book. Okay, can you remember something? It was all about Krishna. Okay, can you remember, you know, uh, some of the pastimes of Krishna? Well, you know, he was there in Vrindavan and, uh, you know, he was playing with the cows. I said, can you remember anything else? Well, I said, why don't you read the book? Why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> so you see, they didn't, really, they didn't really read the book. They read it, but it went in one ear and went out the other ear. They, they, they can't really, you know, explain anything in it. There's so many things explained in it, right? It's, 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 uh, it's the 10th uh, 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 canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the biggest canto of the whole Bhagavatam. And there's so many philosophical points in there, but can't remember anything. So simply reading is not enough. But hearing from a person who's bona fide, then things begin to become clearer. And, and you should have questions. There should always be questions because who, who can claim they understood everything? That would be a, a false premise. So there's always things that need to be cleared up. And by asking questions and getting clarification and then double checking it yourself to make sure the person didn't give you some gobbledygook answer, that's the way you learn. It's not that, oh, I got the answer. And then two days later, you forgot it. No, you should double check. You know, you should ask, oh, Prabhu, uh, where did you get that quote from? Oh, and if the person can't tell you, there's a problem. It's like a red flag, you know, goes up in the air. Wow, he doesn't know where he got that from. Some, oftentimes people say, well, I heard it in a class. What? You heard it in a class? <laughs> How do you know it's true? It's got to be Shastric evidence. It's got to be a statement by Prabhupada or some, some uh, verse in the Bhagavatam where it's got to be in the purport of Bhagavatam. Just like, Oh, I heard it in a class. That doesn't mean anything. What if you heard it incorrectly? And that happens often. And just like there was a class giving, being given in Moscow. And the speaker was uh, American. And there was a translator, a Russian translator, who, who speaks Russian and is supposed, supposed to be able to understand and speak English. So the devotee said, wake up four o'clock in the morning and take a sh cold shower and then chant your rounds. So he translated, wake up four o'clock in the morning and chant your rounds in the cold shower. <laughs> the next day they had to take two, two, three devotees to the hospital for hypothermia. <laughs> You're talking about Russia in the wintertime taking a cold shower. You see how easy it is to make a little mistake, right? And, and uh, uh, whether the Russian translator heard correctly or obviously he didn't, he translated it. I mean, all the words were there, you know, wake up early four o'clock, take a shower, chant your rounds. But he mixed them up a little bit, see? So this is what happens all the time in our minds. It's not just in someone translating one language to another. It happens in our mind. We hear things and, you know, five years later, some question is asked and you raise your hand, oh, I know the answer. You know, you, you have to uh, wake up four o'clock and chant your rounds while taking a cold shower. Well, well no. 
So that it got all uh, it got all uh, mixed up in the mind. So we have to be very careful, and the best care is to hear every day. And anything that you're not sure of, you ask a question, and then afterwards you go home, you look it up. Because if the person is a bona fide speaker, they'll say, oh, it came, comes from this verse, or this purport, or this book, or that book that Prabhupada has written. Okay, so we see here that uh, the translation of the Hare Krishna mantra is, my Lord, meaning Krishna, Oh, the spiritual energy of the Lord, that's Radharani, kindly keep me engaged in your service. So this is the goal of all knowledge. This is the goal of all knowledge. Where is that said? 13th chapter. Where Prabhupada says, um, he says, <clears throat> the monists say that at the ultimate stage, these three items become one. That is, the knower, the process of knowledge, and the knowable, the goal of knowledge. In other words, the knower is the jiva, the process of knowledge is the 20 points of knowledge explained in Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, 8 to 12. And the knowable, that's Krishna, right? So these three things. So the monists or the Mayavadis say that at the ultimate stage, these three items become one. But the devotees do not accept this. Knowledge and development of knowledge mean understanding oneself in Krishna consciousness. We are being led by material consciousness. But as soon as we transfer all consciousness to Krishna activities and realize that Krishna is everything, then we attain real knowledge. In other words, knowledge is nothing but the preliminary stage of understanding devotional service perfectly. There it is. Knowledge is nothing but the preliminary stage of understanding devotional service perfectly. Now, is that what's happening to kids when they go to these schools, private schools or public schools, America or India or Europe? No, they never get to the preliminary stage of understanding devotional service perfectly. So therefore, they're not learning knowledge. They're learning ignorance. Okay. <clears throat> and then Prabhupada says, in the 15th chapter, this will be very clearly explained. Okay, we're not gonna go there right now. But so, so then he says, now to summarize. One may understand that verses 13 chapter 6 and 7, beginning from Mahabhutani and continuing through Chaitanya Driti, analyze the material elements and certain manifestations of the symptoms of life. These combine to form the body or the field of activities. You see, this is science. This is the science of Krishna. And this is a science. It's perfectly explained in Bhagavad Gita. And verses 8 to 12 from Amanitvam <clears throat> through Tattvagyana to Darshanam described the process of knowledge for understanding both types of knower of the field of activities, namely the soul and the super soul. So the process of knowledge is to understand what is the chetra, the field of activity, which means this material body and the material uh, universe. And secondly, to understand the process of knowledge. What is the process of knowledge? It's to help us understand the difference between Jivatma and Paramatma. And then third, uh, <clears throat> then verses 13 through 18, beginning from Anadi Matpuram and continuing through Hridi Sarvasya Vishtitam, describe the soul and the super soul. These thus three items have been described, the field of activity, the body, the process of understanding, and both the soul and the super soul. It is especially described here that only the unalloyed devotees of the Lord can understand these three items clearly. What does, what does, it, does it mean, unalloyed devotee? Someone who actually follows the regulative principles and always feels themselves subordinate to Guru and Krishna and follows the instructions of Guru and Krishna. Why do we say Guru and Why don't we just say Krishna? Okay. Well, that's also explained in the 18th chapter, 59th verse. It says, 
No conditioned soul actually knows what is to be done and what is not to be done. But a person who acts in Krishna consciousness is free to act because everything is prompted by Krishna from within and confirmed by the spiritual master without. And the 13th chapter, 23rd verse, what does it say? It says, it says, <clears throat> yeah, it says, the fact is that every individual living at the is eternally part and parcel of, of the Supreme Lord. And both of them are very intimately related as friends. But the living entity has the tendency to reject the sanction, uh, meaning the, the permission of the Supreme Lord and act independently in an attempt to dominate nature. And because he has this tendency, he is called the marginal energy of the Lord. The living entity can be situated either in the material energy or in the spiritual energy. As long as he is conditioned by the material energy, the Supreme Lord, as a, his friend, the super soul, stays with him just to get him to return to the spiritual energy. The Lord is always eager to take him back to the spiritual energy. But due to his minute independence, the individual entity is continually rejecting the association of spiritual light. This misuse of independence is the cause of his material strife in the, in the conditioned nature. The Lord, therefore, is always giving instruction from within and from without. So how is it from within, from without? He says, from without, he gives instructions, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. Actually, in another place, it says Bhagavad, uh, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, saintly persons, Acharyas and Guru, meaning six and six gurus. That's the way he gives instruction from without. And from within, he tries to convince the living entity that his activities in the material field are not conducive to real ha happiness. Yeah, Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Punar Avartana Arjuna. Hey Arjuna, from uh, uh, the highest planet, Lord Brahma's planet, down to the lowest. All are places of misery. Yeah, he's explaining it many times. There's no real happiness. So he tries to convince the living entity that his activities in the material field are not conducive to real happiness. Quote, just give it up and turn your face toward me. Then you will be happy, Krishna says. Thus, the intelligent person who places his faith in the Paramatma or well, the Supreme Personality God, it begins to advance toward a blissful, eternal life of knowledge. So here we have uh, so many explanations in the Bhagavad Gita. Now, if I ask you, do you remember this? You read the, you read the Bhagavad Gita, right? Do you remember that? No. No. <laughs> you say, I mean, do you remember any of the quotes I just made? I just gave. No. Although you read the Bhagavad Gita, you see? Therefore, it's important to hear it also from realized persons. Then, it, you know, then it strikes you. You say, wow, I didn't even realize that was in there. I read it, but I didn't, I didn't realize it was in there, or I forgot it, or whatever. Maybe I was sleeping when I was reading it, you know. <laughs> so this hearing is most important. <clears throat> okay, so coming back to what we were discussing. So, uh, Prabhupada says, the Narayana Parayana practices this constantly. What is, what is Narayana Parayana? Is this someone who completely uh, depends on, on, on Lord Krishna or Narayan? Yeah. And such a person is never afraid. Uh, <clears throat> so, not even of death. So it says, the Narayana Parayana practices this constantly. What's that? 
But in all conditions and in all circumstances, remembrance of Narayana is essential. That's the point. Remembrance of Narayana is essential. Maharaj Pariksit was such a pure devotee. He was wrongfully cursed by an inexperienced son of a Brahmana who was under the influence of Kali. And Maharaj Pariksit took this to be sent by Narayana. He knew that Narayana, Lord Krishna, had saved him when he was burned in the womb of his mother. And if he were to be killed by a snake bite, it would also take place by the will of the Lord. See, this is the vision of a devotee. This is amazing what he's saying here. The devotee never goes against the will of the Lord. Anything sent by God is a blessing for the devotee. Now, how can he say, what a blessing? This flying poisonous snake is going to come through the air, fly through the air and bite you and kill you? How is that a blessing of the Lord? Ah. Uh, but we're reading about it today, 5,000 years later. And all, whether uh, Pariksit Maharaj was punishing Kali or he was uh, spreading Sankirtan all throughout his kingdom so Kali couldn't find any place to, to take hold, or he's going to die by a snake bike, it's all transcendental. It's all spiritual. Uh, ecstasy. So, therefore, the devotee never goes against the will of the Lord. Anything sent by God is a blessing for the devotee. Therefore, Maharaj Pariksit was neither afraid of nor bewildered by such things. That is the sign of a pure devotee of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Yeah. Yesterday, somebody asked, what is the difference between real ego and false ego? Is there an example? Very good question. Real ego is aham brahmasmi. I am pure spirit soul and the eternal servant of Krishna. Jivera swarupahaya nityera krishna das. That's who I am. False ego is, I am this body, it's American or it's Indian or it's... Uh, uh, Honolulu or this or that, right? And uh, my goal in life is sense gratification. And yeah, I believe in God, but I don't do anything for God. And like that, that's the false ego. The false ego is connected to the body. So the pig, he's got a pig body. So he does what pigs do. And the devotee, he's got it. A devotee body, so he engages the body in devotional service, the mind and the body. And the materialist, he's got a body and he identifies it. He's got many upadis, false identifications. Just like on, on Sankirtan, once this lady said, I'm a Western Washingtonian. Now, in other words, she's making a difference between Western Washingtonian and Eastern Washingtonian and Middle Washingtonian. So uh, all those, those upadis, these false identifications, they don't, she doesn't identify with a soul as part and parcel of Krishna. She identifies with some part of Washington state. And people are, have millions of different uh, identifications of themselves. So therefore, you know, one person said, I'm a transgender. Another person said, I'm a uh, cross-dresser. Another person says, I, I, I'm, in, I'm neutral, I have neutral uh, uh, gender. And another person says this, and another person, you know, now it used to be LGBT, you know, now it's going LGBT A to Z. <laughs> All these different categories of bodily identification. <laughs> so so uh, all that is false ego. Any other questions? Okay. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Key. Thank you very much.